I'm excited. I thought I would be getting more nervous, but I'm getting less nervous and more excited. <laughs> Some of us, it turns out, aren't physically adapted yet to microgravity. As adapted as others, yeah, I may have puked most of the time. Well, we're at a literal heliport in Midtown Manhattan. Doing my best Three Stooges impression. <laughs> I'm about to jump on a helicopter and fly to the airport to get on a plane that's going to take me into zero gravity. Well, microgravity. It's, it's this company called Zero G, and if you've ever been on a roller coaster, right at the top, when you're going over a really big drop, you almost feel yourself like lifting out of your seat, right? You just lift out of your seat a little bit. It's like that magnified times like a million. So <laughs> what happens is it flies up, 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 and then it'll kind of peak and flatten out and then go down. And it'll do that probably about 15 times, actually exactly 15 times during the flight. It's really gonna be something that I've never experienced before. I mean, I've been experiencing gravity for all the years of my life up until now. I've never been without it. It's been my trusty sidekick. But today, I will be letting go of gravity and hopefully at some point today, these nerves will wear off. But until then, I'm waiting for my ride. And my ride today is a helicopter. Of course, I'm bringing my mask. We are still in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic, so I, and of course everyone today, will be extremely careful and we'll all be very responsible. Are you, are you getting all breakfast up? I'm gonna get my flight suit out. Here everyone's kind of getting ready, having breakfast. I don't think you want to eat like a spicy cheese egg thing. Check this out. Yeah, I'm getting excited. Yeah, I've got I've got my ballet flask and my flight suit. Yeah. You didn't get the memo from Bruce today? I just got um. How you feeling? Feeling really good. Yeah. I would say that I am. I'm ready to you know squeeze tight, not let go of like whatever the closest thing in the helicopter is. So on the actual plane, we're not going to be wearing shoes at all. We're just going to be wearing these grippy socks. Because if you bump into someone by accident, you want to be you don't accidentally kick them with your shoes on. This is an awkward. So if you haven't had something to eat, please definitely do get something to eat. We strongly encourage you to eat a little bit before you get up on the flight. Yes, you'll be wearing face masks. <laughs> we know you're going to have a wonderful, wonderful time, so enjoy! <laughs> That's what they're going to be throwing up later, right? <laughs> hey, maybe not. Who's to say? Who's to say? I've taken all my grandchildren to their bar mitzvah as a special treat. I've done five flights so far. That's why my name tag is right side up. <laughs> I've loved space since I was three years old. Today will be my first time experiencing weightlessness. This will literally be a dream come true. Here on a complete impulse purchase, Blade sent across an email. I said, I think I remember that from the OK Go music video. Chelsea, make sure you have that and your photo ID with you the entire time today. Take it to zero gravity. I guess they can't see how big I'm smiling because of the mask. <laughs> Seeing everybody's faces inside in the lounge and the excitement and just everyday people going. For most people, space is at best a third-hand experience. You know somebody who knows somebody maybe that went to space or knows someone that goes to space. I worked at NASA for 15 years as a microgravity material scientist and I did everything I could to come up with an experiment so that I could fly. The truth is more people do science to fly than fly to do science. And that's not that the science wasn't important, but really getting on the plane was that important. I think, uh, I think our ride might be here. This is so crazy. This is also going to be my first time flying in a helicopter. Oh my gosh, th th so. this, like we're going to work. We're, 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 <laughs> like this is the dream we had back in the 80s and 90s of space. And Elon Musk being the only access to space with his Dragon capsule and the Falcon and Jeff Bezos doing what he's doing and Richard Branson doing what he's doing and watching all these people because of our small group that was doing the X Prize and Zero G and Space Adventures. And people laughed at us, especially at NASA. Space access is everything. So. 
Yeah. We gotta wrap run. up. We gotta run to a helicopter. So <laughs> first time we went weightless, we were all laying backs down against the cabin and these G-forces were pressing against us. A hugely stark contrast to what was to come next. They were like, all right, get up slowly. And I got up real slowly, but it was still too fast and the lunar gravity really like hit. And I literally shot right up um, to the ceiling of the cabin. <laughs> it was certainly nothing like I'd ever felt before. One is obviously the weightlessness, which you experience total weightlessness, and then also simulated gravity of the moon and Mars. But on the other end of the spectrum, you experience extra gravity, 1.8 Gs, in between the weightlessness. Like as soon as weightlessness happens, my arms go right up. So I'm just like, what up? <laughs> because it, you almost feel like, like, your hands and your head are like balloons almost, and they just start going up. Your brain has no idea how to like anticipate that, or like it doesn't really know how to make sense of the reactions. It's like, I mean, I've seen dozens and dozens of videos of people doing this and had like what I thought was a pretty good idea of what it would feel like. The periods of weightlessness are pretty, are relatively short, but because, I mean, your brain is hardwired to function with gravity so it's like i couldn't really see straight you know it, seeing was kind of weird hearing was a little bit weird because your brain's just trying to make sense of all of this at once um all of your senses are completely like at 11. actually when i started feeling nauseous i was like oh, i'll get my barf bag out just in case and i couldn't find the zipper it was on the front of my flight suit i couldn't like figure it out and i was like hey ray uh having some issues he was he was really great and so it's like it's all happening so quickly and you're feeling so many different physical sensations in such quick succession that your brain's just like ah, what's happening <laughs> i got a really quick lesson in fluid dynamics most people have probably puked they know what it's like with earth gravity but without gravity um that material it doesn't really like leave your throat and mouth the way that it normally would. So you really gotta like get it out of there somehow. And it's nasty, it's messy, especially during a pandemic. So I have my mask on and I pull the mask down, put the barf bag on. <laughs> and so the barf bag has to be really tight around your mouth because I don't wanna be that jerk that like pukes and then it's all over the cabin and ruins everyone's experience. Like who wants to be that guy? <laughs> it was a very big learning experience. Um, I think it probably would have been more fun to experiment with fluid dynamics with like a water bottle or like some sort of fun science experiment. But puking was informative also. To be fair though, we were the only ones who got sick. It's a plane full of people and everyone was totally fine, but we didn't take Dramamine, so that's, uh, I was ill prepared. <laughs> It was a little too much to handle. It's definitely a feeling that like you can't prepare yourself for how it's gonna feel. Um, even I could talk all day about how it felt for me and you know, you would still have no idea how, how it would really feel for you doing it. It's totally bizarre. I've seen so many videos of the astronauts doing interviews from the space station where they're floating, their hair is up and, and all that, or 
there's less gravity, it makes sense. Um, but to like actually experience it, this is what the Apollo guys were feeling when they were bunny hopping on the moon in these like crazy heavy space suits with tools in their hands. And it's like, you get such a crazy appreciation for how insanely hard that must be, especially like, I mean, the astronauts at the space station, they do spacewalks, you know, in the vacuum of space with all these crazy temperatures going on in these space suits without gravity for like eight hours at a time. They always describe it as like, oh, it's crazy. It's like running a marathon, but I've run marathons. I don't know, I, like that's so hard and so almost like intangibly difficult to me now, um, having experienced that. Totally, totally crazy. We survived, we survived. Oh, definite newfound respect for astronauts and a newfound respect for Earth's gravity. Landing back on the ground, I was like, ooh, she feels nice. <laughs>